Imagine pointing to one of your kids and saying you can't come on the family holiday. You wouldn't do it, would you? Bianca felt the same when a resort refused to accommodate her son Porter because his disability means his dog Pierre must come too. We wouldn't ask someone to leave their wheelchair at home. So why is this okay? <laughs> Porter is an excellent kid. He is so funny, he's cheeky, um, he's kind, he's clever in the most unexpected ways. You got a kiss for mum? And in a lot of ways, he's just a typical seven year old boy. Thank you. Like all children, Porter has his comforts. Rather than a raggedy old bear or a blankie, in his world, it's Batman. That toy in his mouth and his family help provide a calm, stress-free environment. So Porter has um, quite high support needs. He's autistic and he has sensory processing disorder, which can make things like lights, noise and people being around really challenging for him. Um, and he's also non-speaking, which means he uses a communication device for communication with people. Twelve months ago, another superhero arrived at the family home, Pierre, the assistant's dog. We were often faced with having to leave Porter behind in order to do family activities, and that was something we were just never going to accept. We were never going to exclude one child um, in order to participate in our community. So we began the process three years ago to get a service dog for Porter, um, so that we could move together as a family unit because leaving someone behind is not an option. That extra comfort has been life-changing. Mum of four Bianca says the boy we see now is far different to the one from a year ago. For our family, having a service dog has opened up the whole world to us. <laughs> He is the same little boy he is outside the home that we see at home now, which is great. So he's able to participate in our community. Um, yeah, and he's happy to go places and do things that we would never have been able to do before. Even seeing your face there, you must love <laughs> Pierre and what he's done. Oh, absolutely. He's certainly part of our family now and um, he loves all the kids. And yeah, he's, he's Porter's best mate. Pierre's even allowed this family to do what most of us take for granted, have a holiday, or so they thought. So like every parent with a child with disabilities will know how challenging um, just undertaking simple everyday things can be, like booking a holiday. And when our uh, booking was refused, I actually initially thought it was a misunderstanding and called and learned really quickly that it wasn't a misunderstanding, it was a purposeful exclusion of my child. Bianca planned to stay here, the Islander Noosa Resort. In the terms and conditions on its website, the resort says no animals are allowed on the premises subject to legislation regarding registered assistance animals. While seemingly acknowledging the law, it told Bianca privately her registered Pierre is a pet, and its laws do not allow pets in the resort. So when you saw that word pet, how did it make you feel? Bit of a kick in the guts, honestly. Um, to disregard something that has had such a profound impact on our lives and the lives of my child is upsetting and discriminatory. This aid, under law, now akin to a seeing eye dog for the vision impaired. But Bianca says while the Discrimination Act has changed, what hasn't is some opinions. It's not the disability itself that makes our lives challenging or exhausting. It is the constant need to advocate, to fight, to go up against discrimination and barriers. That is the issue. The Australian Human Rights Commission recorded a record 137 complaints when it came to autism and discrimination last year. A further 114 regarding assistance animals. 
to have someone refuse my son's service dog that is essentially refusing him access to a holiday. And my seven-year-old son has the right to a family holiday like anybody else's kid. You said it was a kick in the guts. I mean, what happened to the family holiday? It's gone and honestly, I don't have the heart to rebook. <laughs> The Islander Noosa Resort gave Bianca a refund. It didn't respond to our request for comment. I would say to them with an open heart that I truly hope that they do some soul searching and educate themselves around disability and inclusion. People with disability and their families travel too. We go on holidays just like everybody else. That's a family deserving of a holiday. It's not OK. Joining me is the federal member for McKellar, Dr Sophie Scomps. Sophie, we really appreciate your time. I think about the excitement this family felt as they finally planned a holiday, only to be told, no, not with the assistance dog. That's so tough. Oh, it's extremely tough and I can't imagine how upsetting it would have been for the family to have to endure that. And really it shouldn't be happening in this day and age. Assistance dogs have been around for a long time now. So for them to be met with that resistance is really would have been very upsetting for the family. And so I think we have a job to do to make it better known what the role of assistance dogs are and what the rights of people who have an assistance dog, what their rights are. Because their rights are actually protected by the Federal Disability Discrimination Act. So it's just getting that information out there so people are aware. Sophie, you spoke on this very issue in Parliament last year. Have you seen any change since then? Look, I haven't personally seen the change, but I do know I had had a number of my own constituents come and talk to me about the issues they were having. They were quite distressed at the resistance they were finding. They were still being met with, even in this day and age, when trying to take their assistance dogs into restaurants or even on beaches. And these were people, veterans, um, who've had their assistance dogs for some time. But what they told me was they would like us to help them get the information out there so people are aware that actually people with assistance dogs do have the right to take them into public places. But additionally, proprietors and other people also have the right to ask people to show them their accreditation and that actually the dog is working for them. But this is an issue that keeps coming up way too often. So if someone does have that accreditation, is there any reason, say, a cafe, bus or resort can deny someone entry with their assistance dog? Look, an assistance dog can be denied access to a place that needs to have stringent sterility uh, precautions. So, no, you couldn't take your assistance dog into an operating theatre, for example. But nearly every other place, uh, people have the right to take their assistance dog with them. And when we talk about an assistance dog, you wouldn't ask somebody to leave their wheelchair at the door yeah. because these assistance dogs really do help people get out into public to feel safe, um, to feel calm and to feel confident when they're out and about. So, so Sophie, do you think part of the problem is that historically assistance dogs have been for the visually impaired? So if a person's disability isn't immediately noticeable, like autism or PTSD, they're dismissed as merely pets? Look, I think that could be part of the issue, is that traditionally that's what we've seen. but. Assistance dogs for psychological reasons have been around for some time now, so I really think it's up to councils and other places to try and inform our proprietors, our restaurants, the people who are in public spaces about the rights of people with assistance dogs because things like what happened to this family should just not be happening anymore. When you've got a clear federal law but you also have different state laws, it can be all very confusing. So how do you make it clear? Look, I think it's education and uh, there may be different laws in different states but that is a federal law and that is the rights of people with disability. Why do you care so much about this issue? Well, it's an issue that constituents in my electorate have brought to me and have told me is deeply upsetting for them. Is anyone in Canberra listening to you? Look, I think so. I think so. And I do know that my constituents are listening as well because a number of people have thanked me for raising this issue. And I think it's the least I can do. Let's raise awareness on this. Let's let, let people know what their rights are and be far more accepting of this. Well, I think you said it perfectly, Sophie, that we wouldn't tell someone to leave their wheelchair at the door. It's about changing attitudes. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks so much.
And we have some wonderful news. Bannisters got in touch with us late this afternoon. The hotel chain is inviting Porter, his family and Pierre to stay for three nights with free breakfast and $400 dining credit. So guys, you're going on your holiday. Enjoy.